Hi folks, the Heimer 3D Taster. We love this tool because it's really accurate and it makes it really easy to find your X, Y, and Z zero on your CNC machine. The one thing we don't love about it is when you break a tip. Is there a way to make a less expensive, maybe a little bit less accurate tip that we can use because I don't always need the insane German precision accuracy of this thing and it really stinks to break the tips. I think we figured it out. The key is this 3D printed part combined with some pencil lead and some Loctite 380, AKA Black Max. Let's show how you can build a little fixture to put these together yourself for pretty darn inexpensive. Before we get started, I'm decking off the back side of the part with the Superfly. We'll then flip it over and that'll let us use the parallel to get an accurate Z datum, which will sit on the top of our parallel and that will be the bottom of our part. This will help get us an accurate dimension on the thickness of this overall jig. Starting off using the Superfly 2500 RPMs, 40 inches per minute on the Tormach 770, stepping down in 40 thousandths of an inch, takes a few passes that gets us down to our thickness with a nice surface finish. There are quite a few ways we could make this next feature. We're doing it one of the easiest ways, which is a 2D contour, a quarter inch end mill, our infamous tool 31, just picking that chain. The key is choosing the ramp angle and max step down here, taking it easy to make sure we get good chip evacuation as we plunge down in. Fusion gives us some pretty nice control over the 2D contour toolpath. If you right click, choose view toolpath, this gives you a break out of every line of the G-code, what it's doing, the XYZ coordinates, the type of movement, the feed rate, the RPM, really helpful. What I wanted to show here was just a quick toolpath where we did our ramping, the red circular motions where it's helixing down at the same diameter as our finish geometry. When you want to maximize accuracy as well as surface finish, right click on that 2D contour, edit, and under passes, choose multiple finishing passes. I'll add one here at say, 5,007 inch. We'll set the number of finishing passes to two. What this really does is one additional finishing pass. Click OK and what you can now see is we've got two different blue lines. One that's happening on the same diameter as our ramping and then the second one, the final finishing one that's happening 5,000 of an inch outside of that. Three quick spot drills. Now, if you notice, Fusion's giving us three red lines in our simulation timeline. If we hover our mouse over one, you can see it says rapid collision with stock. So Fusion thinks at this point, the tool is going to be rapid plunging into material. That material's already been machined away, but Fusion doesn't know that because we're only simulating from the spot. So the proper way to check that would be to simulate from the setup, to simulate, and then you can click on the operation you care about. It's now correctly simulated, the material's gone, and we no longer have any crash warnings. Drilling those holes out. So this is important. We're using a number 46 drill. A number 46 drill is 81 thousandths of an inch, which is just a hair over two millimeters. Perfect for our two millimeter pencil lead. Drills often drill slightly oversized and they definitely aren't a great way to make really, really round holes, but we have found they've worked great and well within tolerance for this jig. You do want to have your speeds and feeds nailed down, especially when you're using smaller diameter drills or when you're pushing them deep. Here, we're only pushing it about four times its diameter. It's a 0.08 inch drill through about 0.32 inches of material. So not too tricky, but again, four times is about the limit of a normal recipe. When you start getting into six or eight times, that's when you've really got to either slow down or be conscious of chip evacuation. We're running this at 160 surface feet for about 7,500 RPMs, 3 thousandths of an inch feed per rev, pecking every 20 thou. Engraving with the Lakeshore 20 degree double-ended engraver, we love this tool, and you can get a really cool look if you just barely engrave your part, something like five tenths or under a thousandth of an inch. We weren't quite deep enough on the first pass, but I like it because it's almost as if it's been lasered in there. It doesn't really look like a traditional subtractive cutting engraving process. It's actually the tool that we use on our fixture plates, and unlike some of the other engraving tools that we've used in the past, we get really good tool life out of this one. 
and I goofed on this part earlier on. I actually tried to use the quarter inch end mill to face it off and I just had a bad step over recipe and it snapped off. But you know what? Given that this whole project is about showing how to repair broken Heimer tips, that'll be a good uh, humility reminder that we all make mistakes. So what do you need this? You need some number two pencil lead. You need some Loctite 380, AKA the Black Max. Take a Mitutoyu only branded scale, it has to be Mitutoyu, and cut three pieces of lead, about an inch. You'll see later they could be shorter, but we've generally just done an inch. Card here to the NYC CNC page where we will include the links of the stuff that we used for this specific build. I like to then take a two millimeter drill and just by hand clean out the 3D printed holes. You want to make sure that they're free of debris and they've got the right tolerances. Because if you push the pencil lead in too hard, you'll end up just snapping it. And these are meant to break when you make a mistake at the machine, not when you're assembling the jig to fix the broken Heimer tips. Give your Loctite a quick shake and then put a drop in each hole and push in your pencil lead. The awesome thing about this setup is it's not that sensitive to how far in you're able to push it. You don't have to use an activator, but we get handy because we use the super glue trick card here to that page so often, and the activator just lets you get back to the machine quicker so you can break the next tip. So once that's dried, slide that assembly through the jig that we just made, snip off those three pieces, you know, something like 16th of an inch past, they're gonna be protruding out a little, and then any old sandpaper, it's, it's pencil lead, it sands really easy. And the beauty of this is it lets you sand them to a known dimension, and all three pencil lead are pretty darn coplanar with each other, and that's key because we want a consistent replicable Z height when the tip is installed. Let's remove the expensive German precision perfectly made not broken tip, and we're gonna throw in one of our shop made replacement tips. Be careful, you can over tighten the 3D printed part and it can snap off inside your Heimer body. And we're gonna save how you fix that for a, another video. But finger tight, plenty good. I bet you weren't ready for that. So most people probably know the way a Heimer tip works is there's a hollow tube, I think they're ceramic, and if you crash it in X or Y, it'll simply crack or shear off. What makes the Heimer tip so cool is how do you protect the Heimer body if you crash in Z? And the way they handle that is this taper on the tip itself. So when you plunge straight down in Z and crash, oh, it's that taper that causes the ceramic tube, or in our case, the pencil lead, to break. We're also gonna use that taper as a way of setting the height of when we slide that replacement tip into our somewhat janky pencil lead replaced fimer. Now you can really feel it going in here. You can just feel it's got that nice tight fit all around it, excellent. With the tip seated where that taper meets the end of the pencil lead, grab some more 380 Black Max. And what you wanna do here is just make sure you get enough so that it's kind of forming a continuous band all the way around it. Activator can help here just so that it doesn't drip. I actually got a little bit on the tip itself, but a razor blade or a scalpel easily will remove it. And you'll have to do that if you start recycling these tips anyways. So now the $45.93 question, or $41 if you're a Prime member, is are the darn things accurate enough to use in shop? In the first version of this video that we uploaded, I made a mistake. I stated the run out of a Heimer tip is canceled if you find the left and the right edge of a part. That is not true. I apologize. I wanted to re-upload this video to correct that mistake, but also to show this Heimer tip I still think is a great tool. So sorry for that mistake again, folks. To dial in the run out, I like to use two two millimeter wrenches. It helps a lot to have wrenches on the opposing screws to tighten one and loosen the other. We found that the four set screws might be a little bit sticky. So I like to loosen them all first, just lightly snug them back down before we actually start dialing in that run out. So we're high there. So we'll come to the spot where we are high. We'll tighten the screw where we're high as we loosen the screw where we're low. My preference is to go half the distance. Check it again. I like to reset to zero each time we check it. We're still high there. You can see the indicator needle move as I tighten the front screw. Re-zero again. And now we've got that down to about three thousandths of an inch right now. Our low spot lines up with the screw, that's always nice. Rotate to the high spot. 
So we'll come back half the distance, again tightening the front screw as we loosen the back screw. You'll notice if you do end up over tightening, the set screws tend to pop a little bit and that will cause your indicator needle to jerk. So I try not to over tighten these. Re-zero. And we're within half a thou. It's not that difficult to dial the run out down even further. What is difficult is to do so while you keep the four screws snug. They don't need to be tight, but you don't want them loose or else you risk the tip moving throughout its normal use. On a lathe four jaw chuck, sometimes you'll just crank down on that high spot to bump out those last few tenths of run out. I don't recommend doing that on a Heimer body because the set screws just aren't meant to take that additional torque. Awesome, got it down to three ten thousandths of an inch, and that's normally what we'll consider acceptable for daily use on the Tormach. So now let's use a one, two, three block, and let's test a factory Heimer tip and compare it to our replacement Heimer tip. We've dialed out the runout on both of these tips. You'll notice I've got the one, two, three block on the right-hand side. What this allows me to do is take this measurement while only moving the axis in one direction. Reversing that direction would introduce some additional amount of error due to either backlash or stick slip on the x-axis of the Tormach, and I prefer in this test to isolate that out. So we zero it on the left side, jog over to the right-hand side, Looking at the Heimer, go to zero, and our PathPilot DRO shows three inches and eight tenths. Swap out to our replacement tip version. First, we'll test the left-hand side. I really like having the touch screen on PathPilot here. I find it's much easier and safer to use. While looking at the Heimer to get to zero, I then <laughs> looked over at PathPilot and we are in the exact same location. That's a good sign. and jog to the right side of our block, same thing. Step over in thousandths until we get close, and then we'll creep up on it in tenths. Again, just looking at the Heimer, we're within a tenth. Awesome. Folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Again, link in the video description to the bill of materials and some of the additional information on how you can make one of these. Here's the thing we would change add a little bevel on the 3D printed part. That's gonna let you clock that part in a fixture or a soft jaw. So when you break your Fimer tip, you can set that in your machine, use an undersized drill, drill out that pencil lead, clean it out, and you ought to be able to reuse the 3D printed part quite a few times. Again, saving costs and making it a little bit more fun to use the Heimer and not so worried about breaking tips, especially on the little day-to-day -day jobs. Take care, see you soon.